Welcome back to Close Up. Republicans are looking to regroup after taking a drubbing at the ballot box in 2018. But they're hopeful with a presidential incumbent on the ticket in 2020, they'll be able to do better. Joining us this morning is Steve Negron, the Republican nominee for Congress in the 2nd District in 2018. Hi, Steve, Adam. Good morning. Us. Absolutely. So we know you've been exploring the idea of running again. Uh, tell us where you are in that process right now. Well, uh, it's very simple. Uh, we're getting the band back together. <laughs> and uh, we're going to uh, uh, file our candidacy tomorrow. Um, with the FEC, and so we're going to go and, and take on Ann Custer again for a second time. Tell us what's going to be different, I guess. Are there lessons learned from 2018, and how do you apply those in 2020? Sure, absolutely. I think one of the things that we did realize is that, you know, name recognition was a big deal for us the last time, and I think, you know, we'd look where we were and how we finished, and that's our starting point this time. And we need to look at those issues that are really that go, and they transcend all, all parties. You know, we have to look at those things like national debt. We talked about that during the campaign last time. You know, I'm hearing a lot of rhetoric from D.C. We don't hear anything about that. Student debt is another thing that's out there. You know, I have a daughter who's a sophomore in college, so it's very, um, it's in the front of our minds and our household to do those things. So we need to make sure that we address issues that affect everybody uh, and not just one party or the other. And I think that's what we have to do a better job this time. The possibility of a Republican primary is out there. How do you navigate that? You had a lot of people in the last one. You're hoping this time perhaps to just get this thing gone, gone and then go straight a to the absolutely. general. Absolutely. That's, that's our goal. You know, but this is the great state of New Hampshire. Anybody can can pay their fees and get their bees and then and, and run. Um, so, But that's our, our goal is to do that because we believe that as we in New Hampshire, it is very unique. Our primary is so late that we beat each other up in the primary, and then you got to take a, a second breath in and go into a general and get some pretty formidable foes. So what we'd like to do is say, you know what? Let's galvanize the party. Let's get everybody back together, and let's do a concerted effort. So our goal is to not have a primary, but we welcome any and all challengers. I know you were really energized by going to CPAC and seeing the president speak there uh, a few weeks back. How does that play into how you run in 2020? You're going to have him on the ticket. Uh, you're going to try and see uh, a Steve Negron aligned even more closely with President Trump this time? Well, I think we're going to align with the policies that he's out there that are very good, not only for the United States, but for the state of New Hampshire. And that's what I saw um, there at CPAC was the diversity of people that were there that were supporting our president. And I got to be honest with you, Adam, it surprised me as well. Every walk of life, every age. And I think that's the kind of message that needs to get out. He gets beat up pretty bad in the media about being this or that. But what I saw firsthand was that there's the entire spectrum that's supporting our president right now. The media is one thing. Sometimes he doesn't do himself any favors. Right. Your thoughts on his pretty much relentless attacks on J Senator John McCain, who was, who was passed, basically. Right. You know, I am, that's a personal issue, I think, that the president has with Senator McCain as a veteran. And as my wife, as you know, we have a huge military family. I don't think it's a right to be able to attack anybody for his military service. If he's talking about some things that he thought the Senator McCain did, then that's the president's role. I necessarily wouldn't do that. I mean, as, as a man of faith, you know, the man has passed on. Um, let his live his life and let his family live their life. Um, but I, me personally, I certainly wouldn't, wouldn't have done something like that. It's an interesting dynamic right now. Republicans have had to answer for Trump's tweets and all of these things, but now we're seeing Democrats in Congress having to answer for Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Right. And we've seen Representative Custer align herself, maybe not on policy, but very closely, at right. least in photos and, and cultural phenomena yes, there. So what's your take on AOC and how, what she's doing to Congress? Well, I think there's this, there's this huge phenomenon that's happening right now in Congress with these freshmen um, Congress people that are actually bringing this really kind of radical view um, that's out there. And it surprises me that you have an established Congresswoman in Ann Custer that's aligning herself with somebody that I think is really kind of like a firestorm. Uh, we saw that at State of the Union address. We see her at every photo op that she's there with um, Congresswoman um, Cortez. And I think that really, you know, if she's aligning herself, does that really align with the values of New Hampshire? And I can tell you some of the things that Ocasio-Cortez or Congresswoman Cortez is saying isn't really what the people of New Hampshire are looking for. And I think I think it's uh, it really kind of makes people take a stand and say, where is Congresswoman Custer? Is she really buying into some of the stuff that um, Congresswoman Cortez is saying? And if she is, then that really doesn't represent the people of New Hampshire. Let's talk the federal budget really quick here. Uh, there are some potential with the uh, the money for the wall could take away from the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. Right. Not the second district, but still New Hampshire. Right. What are your thoughts on that? Well, first of all, you know, I, I did some research about this, you know, this Emergency Powers Act that was just instituted in 76 by President Ford. Every president since, excluding President Ford, has enacted that power. I got to personally believe that you shouldn't circumvent the, the three branches of government, but if that's a law that's out there that allows every president since President Ford to do that, he can do that. You know, being a military guy, I know an acquisition. I understand military construction. I understand how budgets are done. You know, we, could this be delayed? Absolutely. Does it really have a negative effect? It could, but you know, you have to look at the surrounding areas. Is there other money that's out there? People want to take this byline and say Portsmouth not getting money. 
that's that's really kind of disingenuous, you know, because there could be the FY20 budget doesn't happen, but I've got FY17 money I can look at, FY18 money I can look at. So it really is beholden to the people who represent the state of New Hampshire, which would be our entire congressional delegation to fight for those monies that I know by pre previous experience that's out there, and that's what we should be doing. If anybody has the money, it is the Pentagon. Absolutely. <laughs> Steve Negron, running for Congress in 2020. We thank you for joining us on Close Up. Thank you very much, Adam.